Please. So, what year did you, or did you move, sorry, were you born in Ellaby? No. Okay, so what year did you move to Ellaby? 1947. All right. Where are you going from? Dexter. Oh, the heart of Maine. Yes. So, do you have any siblings? I have a, a half-brother, Howard, who has a different father than I did. Uh, do they live in, or does he live in town? No, he's moved to California. All right. 18-wheeler. Oh, he's got to close the Oh, jeez. So, uh, where did you live when you were, like, first came to OLB and stuff? Ocean Park, Colby Avenue. All right. I had to ride the bus, uh, of course, to come to school. And I remember my first day on the bus, I was nervous. And I said, fiddlesticks, 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 every time somebody would talk to me. <laughs> A little like today. <laughs> did you go through the OOB school system? I did. Started, I believe, in second grade on School Street. What do you remember about going to school here? What do I remember? I was a teacher's pet in a lot of classes. <laughs> went to the federal, went to elementary school on School Street, second through third and then went to the federal building in fourth grade. Then we moved to Kennebunk, so I went to fifth grade in Kennebunk, Park Street School, and then came back for the rest of my school and graduated from here. Did you have any favorite teachers? Oh gosh, yes. Mrs. Neal, Mrs. Nealon. People will tell you she was a tough teacher, and she was, but she liked me, she was good. She was a real teacher, she was great. And Emerson Cummings in high school, and Charles Oranger in high school, um, Jerome Lapelletier, the principal in high school. He also taught English. Um, <coughs> Ruth Sterrett in fourth grade at the Federal Building. Those are the ones that come to mind first. Uh, so, what was your childhood like in OB? Well, <clears throat> we lived at 24 Central Avenue in a three-story apartment building that we owned. We rented apartments in the summertime. I was the chambermaid. I also had a horse, and we had to go through the uh, town manager because my mother, my mother uh, built a small barn in our backyard on Lake Avenue for the horse. And that's where he lived until we moved to Saco when I went to college. So, what was your favorite memory of OOB? Oh, the beach. Oh, we spent, I mean, that's why I've got spots all over me, because we spent, we didn't know better, and we all spent the summer on the beach in the sun and ruined ourselves, actually. <laughs> Uh, so, what was your first job in OOB? Well, I was my mother's chambermaid, because we rented our apartments in the summertime only. Uh, <clears throat> did you have any other jobs in town? Yeah, I worked at a sort of a little variety store, it's not there anymore, of course, down on Old Orchard Street. Was there any jobs that you really wanted to do? Or? No, <laughs> <laughs> but I had to support my horse. Uh -huh. So I had to work. My mother was a single. My father died when I was not even a year old yet. <clears throat> so how much was your pay? Oh my gosh. I have trouble remembering yesterday. I, it was very little. I know that. Because I was, what, 16, 17, 16? Um, and it was very little. I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. It wasn't much. Okay. So, are there any stories about the history of OOB that you experienced that you'd like to share with us? The history of OOB. I was an Eisenhower girl when he was running for president. Right, David Eisenhower? He was a general. And we had a parade. And we wore dresses they were given to us. Rode in the back of cars, convertibles down Old Orchard Street. Oh, I remember that just as plain as day. Amazing, I think, to remember. 
I was an Eisenhower girl. I remember that. And that would have been in the 50s, because I was in high school. Uh, when was he president? 52, 3, somewhere in there. No, I would have been 13. 56, somewhere in there. Anyway, I remember that. Um, I don't remember the Ku Klux Klan marching down Old Orchard Street, but I have heard, learned about it since. It passed me by I, completely. I didn't know that was going on. <clears throat> we weren't as alert to news as you guys are now, you know. How would you get the message around or something or travel around? To yeah, the news, news, you know, we had radio. <laughs> Just barely had TV in 1948, 9. Uh, so, you know, and it wasn't anything I would have gone to anyway, you know. So, that's the bad things and the good things. Things in OOB that drastically changed throughout your time living here, and have you been affected by it in any way? I can, I, I need to ask, tell you this. When we were children, when we were 12, 15, 18, girls could go, we always went out in groups, but we could walk downtown safely after dark any time. It was no problem. If I had a 15-year-old daughter now, I would not send her downtown <laughs> um, after dark. Uh, so that's changed. The whole of downtown has changed because some of the rides that I loved have just disappeared, been gone. Um, th those are the, uh, and a lot of building, a lot of new families. Because mm -hmm. when I was in Ocean Park, that was a very small, limited community. Uh, very quiet. Nothing went on there except the 4th of July Horribles Parade. I have pictures. All the little girls would decorate their doll carriages to go in the Horribles Parade. Uh, I was eight or nine, ten, something like that. What was the Horribles Parade? It was the 4th of July Parade. Now they don't call it the Horribles anymore, they call it the 4th of July Parade. <laughs> now why do you think they called it the Horribles? Well, people dressed up horribly. Oh. Costumes and, like I say, the decorated doll carriages and bicycles and, you know. Mm -hmm. It was just a fun thing on the 4th of July. Have you been a witness or a victim to any catastrophic events in OOB and, ha and has it affected you in any way? Hmm. Apparently not. I can't, I can't think of anything catastrophic. The most catastrophic thing, catastrophic thing was when I was teaching kindergarten on School Street and we had a whale wash up on the beach and I marched all my kiddos right down the street to look at him. It was a science project. <laughs> that, that's the biggest thing that happened, I think. <laughs> what about the ice storm? Are any storms, power outages? Gone out of my mind. Flooding? Oh, okay. Yep. Gone out of my mind. I would like to stay in Old Orchard. I don't live in Old Orchard now. Okay. I wish I could. I would love to move into uh, Cider Hill or someplace like that. But I'm living in Biddeford. But, you know, if I could, I would live here. It's where all my memories are, where my childhood, where all my friends come. I got a whole bunch of friends here today <clears throat> that I grew up with. Why do you want to come here in the first place? Like, what was the tourist attraction, or what made you want to stay here? Well, I came here in 47, remember, I was seven years old. I didn't have much choice. My mother remarried, and he worked at the Saco Lowell shops in Saco. And so we had to move down here from Dexter, where I was born, um, to accommodate his job. And we found that house on Colby Avenue, which we owned. And we lived there for quite a while till we moved to Kennebunk. And we owned that house, and then we moved back over after a year and uh, lived in Ocean Park for a while and then bought the house on 24 Central. And what was, like, some of the best things at that house or the fondest memories that you Which remember? house? Uh, either Ed? one. Either one. Oh, I can tell you about Ocean Park. There's a big rec hall on the same street in Ocean Park, and they used to have all-age dances there. Square dances, ballroom dances, that's where I learned how to dance. The men, older men, grandfathers, fathers, would teach us, I would dance with them, <laughs> and they'd teach me how to ballroom dance. Oh, I love going there. 
played tennis on the tennis courts in Ocean Park. Played in the woods. You know where the covered bridge is in Ocean Park? Yeah. Those woods, which I can't remember the name of right this time. Guild Park, I think. Guild. You're right. Guild. Uh, could walk down from my house on Colby and play in that park safely. All the little girls would go down there and play in the trees and the... And the uh, um, right. This happens to me all the time. The words just leave me completely. Poison, I poison ivy. And I never caught it until I was living in Biddeford near the ocean. And then, boy, did I catch it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. But when I was a child, it didn't affect me. But that's one of my fondest memories. I never got poison ivy in the woods. And it was safe to, to walk in, in the woods. People walk their dogs now there, I think, a lot. They park on Temple and walk their dogs. So what was one of your favorite things to do in OOB? Oh, go downtown. Ride the, uh, ride the carts. And since I was a horse person, I didn't mind the smells and the odors. <laughs> I love those. And I love the donkeys. And uh, the Jack and Jill slide. Oh. The old Mary Ground, the original Mary Ground, which they sold and sent away, which was the biggest mistake the town made ever. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful, I believe it was made in Germany, but I'm not sure. You get that information at the museum if you need it. But going downtown, the rides. What the, happened? There used to be a trampoline act down there. We'd go down and bounce on the trampolines. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite thing to do and it will be now? We like to go downtown, sit on the benches, and watch the tourists, and eat the pizza and the french fries, pia fries. Old Orchard is famous for its fires, and we've had fires that have cleaned out downtown several times, and that's the way they went, plus the donkeys and those things. But you'll see pictures of those at the museum, too, if you haven't already. Uh, people have made lovely paintings of all the rides that used to be there. Are they accurate? Like, oh, they... yes. Oh, yeah. They're good. Because they were painted by people who were here then <laughs> and remember them. <clears throat> uh, so, where was your favorite place to hang out? Back in the day? Yeah. Hmm. When we were in high school, we had clubs. Each grade level had its own club. Uh, our club, were, what, our girls club, we had girls clubs, boys clubs, they weren't integrated at all. There were two boys clubs, the Blue Diamonds and, and ISOR, and there were several girls clubs, because you know, girls are clubbier than the boys are. Um, and our club's name was the Hornets. And we used to hang around together. We would have meetings, I mean, we were official. We had meetings, and one of the meetings was in a house on Adelaide Road. One of our gals lived there, and she had a rumpus room, that's what it was called back in the day, down cellar, and we would meet at her house. Um, we were pretty thick, pretty pretty close to it. Yep. And was it just a club that you banded together? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I think we had dues because we had to pay for those the food that we ate at these meetings. <laughs> we couldn't expect the parents to supply all the food. So we did have dues, and it lasted right through high school. When I was a senior, I was still a Hornet, and it was still it still existed. Was it just something that you did, or was it kind of just a thing that everybody did? Like Everybody in my car, yep. So were there any big, like, huge landmarks that a lot of people would go to that aren't here today that people might not know about? The kite track. Did you see any of that at the museum? We, yeah, and we've seen it. Down in the pictures. corner, in the front room. The kite track. And my best friend's father helped to build that uh, grandstand. Um, and my husband, ex-husband, former husband, um, father raced um, sulky horses. And I've got pictures of them racing at the kite track. Which called the kite track because it was a big circle, then it looped around and it was a small circle and looped that way. So it was like figure eight with a small one on the top and a large one on the bottom. That's all housing now. It's all condos where that track used to be. 
down off uh, Portland, uh, not Portland Avenue. Uh, Walnut. Nope. Huh? Yeah, that's Portland Avenue. Yes, off Portland Avenue. As you turn off Cascade Road and make the big curve, it would rain on that big curve on Portland Avenue. Yeah, you can still see it on some maps. Yes. It's pretty overgrown, but you can. It's well, still there's there. Condos there. There's yeah. actually condos built, right? It's muddy, marshy, clayey, very clayey out there. Everybody expected the track to eventually sink into <laughs> the earth, uh, but it was good for running horses on it. That clay surface. When you were growing up. Much longer. <laughs> Storms keep taking out the end of the pier. Uh, it's called Kate Still No. What's it called at the, the restaurant at the end of the pier? Pier Patio Pub? Mm, probably. I don't know. I don't go there anymore. And I haven't been on the pier for a long time, but it used to be much longer. In the 17, 1800s, it was long, but big storms came along. Um, they tried steel uh, pylons for a while, you know, that didn't work. And that's back to the wooden ones. You can see it from the beach. You have to walk under them. And with the pier, was it the pr only problems, kind of like storms and all that, or was there any other like smaller problems that happened with it on the pier, like scaling or anything like that? Oh no. Or no. that tried knocking down the pier. No, no, I never heard any of that. It might have happened, but it didn't. Wasn't in my area of interest or anything. Did you ever go to the casino at the end, Carol? Can't bring movies. I'll try and think. I don't think so. I think at that time I was living in Florida. Ah, okay. Yeah. Do you miss being a kid? <laughs> Any 78-year-old you ask that question is going to say, yes! <laughs> bring back those years. Yes. But... Birthdays are better than the alternative, right? So I accept everyone. And I was just wondering, were there any traditions or something that they would do in Old Orchard Beach that they don't do now? Hmm. Like something big or something like that. Hmm. Well, that would take some thought. I remember my horse, really. Uh, where, where the high school stands now, used to be the sweat farm. Big farmhouse, big barn. And there was a riding stable there at one time. But I had my own horse. My best friend on Seaview Avenue had her own horse. And E. Emerson Boulevard, E. Emerson Boulevard, T for Turn Road, used to go all the way through to the Ross Road. And Adelaide Road used to go all the way through to the Ross Road. They were fire lanes. They were dirt roads so that the fire trucks could get up to the reclaimed plains in case there was a fire. A lot of blueberry barrens up there. And we used to ride there. We used to ride to Saco. Uh, we were kind of famous by having our horses all over town. Rode on the beach. Not the summertime. But in the wintertime. Market. Edwards Market. And I used to go down there with my change in my hand and buy penny candy. And come home with my little brown bag and my little penny candy. That's when I was seven, eight, nine, somewhere in there. <clears throat> now it's a bakery and I don't know what all else. Gift shop. But it was a great big yellow grocery store. That's one of the things that's not there anymore. Was that like the main thing where people went to or was there any other big tourist attraction? Oh yeah, thing? Ocean Park was famous for its, its uh, um, ice cream parlor. It still is, I guess. That's uh, what I hear. Uh, the library's always been there. It's a nice little library. Um, like I say, it's very quiet, very quiet. It's a nice antithesis to Old Orchard Beach itself, although it's part of the town, you know, it's not a separate town or anything. Um, boy, I've been thinking about this interview and thinking of things that I remember. Was there anything like trails or something that kind of got excavated or something nature-wise? Well, Tifa Turn Road is no more. It's E. Emerson Cummings Boulevard, named after my high school math teacher. And like I say, it used to go straight through, but now it's Atlantic Village. All those trailers, 
mobile homes, I guess we call them now. And at the end of Adelaide Road is a camping area with a pond and whatever for people with camping trailers and tents and so forth. Couldn't ride through there now with a horse or anything else. Why did they name it after your teacher? Because he really, really was a wonderful townsperson. He did more for this town. He was the only black man in town. Back then, we thought nothing of that. He was Emerson. He was Emmy. Uh, just a wonderful man. Just loved him to death. Uh, didn't see color when we were in class, you know? Just He was just here on staff. Uh, and, and the town was segregated to a point. When um, musical groups would come in town, black ones, Negro ones, um, they had their, uh, their places to rent, live, um, were out on uh, Portland Avenue. That was the only area they couldn't live in town because segregation ruled at that time, you know. When you think about got back on it now and the way we think now, we think, my gosh, what a shame. We were so stupid. <laughs> we were so stupid. Uh, well, not me personally, because I loved a man to death. He was, he was just a wonderful person. Served on the town council and all kinds of committees. Okay. So we have a couple extra qu questions, and we still have a little bit of time left. So if, if we want to go through those, maybe. I have 20 minutes left. All right. Then I have to be I'll somewhere else. And was there, I'm just wondering if there was any other famous people or like, you know how your high school teacher got famous for being really nice and all that? Was there any other people kind of like that but didn't really get recognized or written down or something like that in terms of like helping build stuff? Or? Hmm. Well, Charlie Laranger, this school was named after. He was a high school math teacher also. Um, oh, probably Ms. Koenigs could answer that question better than I could. Oh, who's famous? Um, we had lots of visiting musical groups and people that performed on the pier in my time. Um, Hmm. Not that I could afford to go see them, and I was too young to go see them anyway. <clears throat> but we'd see them around town. They knew, we knew they were here. Uh, local people made it big. Who made it big? Hmm. Jeepers. My son's girlfriend that he took to the prom is now the commissioner of education in Maine. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> She's in her 50s. <laughs> uh, nothing is coming to mind. But that's the memory thing. You get to be my age and you forget a lot. Things will pop up all of a sudden. You'll be in bed trying to go to sleep and you'll be, oh my God, what did I think of that? I'll think of a dozen things after I leave here. <laughs> you can move on to the extra questions. Yeah, all right. So did you go into, or did you ever go to any of the concerts at the ballpark or the pier? All the time. Well, uh, 24 Central is pretty close to the ballpark. I could sit on my punch front porch and listen to Cher when she was at the ballpark and not have to buy a ticket. <laughs> uh, who else was there? Oh God, we had more people at the ballpark, famous people. And of course the pier with everybody back in the day. Um, <coughs> see, I'm not, I'm losing names. Um, Rudy, Valley. Rudy Valley was down there. Thank you, Lee. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, like Steve Miller Band, Def Leppard. No, not not my not my genre at all. <laughs> at all. I go to the park every summer and go to see um, um, 
Don, Don, not Don McLean. <laughs> He's not in the news lately. Don uh, Campbell. He's going to be in the park, and at the at the ballpark. He was at the ballpark last summer. We don't like going to the um, concerts at the ballpark like we did in the park. In the park, you take your own chair, you sit on grass, you sit right there when he's right there performing. In the ballpark, it's I don't know why they moved it. I really don't know why, because the the park is the perfect place. Uh, or something like that. You go downtown, and but you're not downtown. You're, you know, in the grass and the flowers and the trees and the library. Yes. <laughs> what and what was one of the main transports of getting there? Like, what did most people use to get there? Walk. <laughs> we walked everywhere. There were only five thousand people living in this town when I was growing up, and you just walked everywhere. Just. Right. I mean, you walk, I lived at the top of the hill, like Union Avenue, the top of the hill, right out there. Um, and walking to the beach was fine. Walking home was really something else. You wanted to go back to the beach and jump in the ocean after you got home. It was really hot, long and hot. Um, what was your question? <laughs> yes, I ramble. Uh, what was like the main transport? Oh, like main transport, yeah, walking. Yeah, walking. And also? We had milk deliveries at the house. We had tabletop pies deliver at the house. We had the bread people deliver at the house. Um, you kept a box out on your porch with ice in it so the milkman could put the milk in the box and keep it cold if you were home. Were you there when the electric tr trolley was there? Like when they made the electric trolley? I don't think so. I don't think I ever knew there was one there. All right. That's news to me. Thank you. <laughs> so did you ever see any of, did you ever like watch any of the horse races at the kite track? No. Nope. All right. Watch. That was before my time. That My husband's family was racing at the kite track at that time. So have you met any of the famous people that have come to visit an OLB? No. No. Seems I'd remember that, wouldn't I? <laughs> if they were famous, seems like I would. No. No, I didn't. You will, the other p kids will be talking to people who have, though. Um, there's some 90 year olds and 80 year olds that are being interviewed today, so they will remember some of those people. And were there any big producers or big companies that like supplied a lot of stuff, as in like building supplies to build houses or something? Oh, big business. Yeah, or like supplying resources. No, everybody dealt with Deering Lumber and Deering Lumber. <laughs> um, I worked at the Saco Library after I graduated from college. Um, and that had a Deering Room named after Deering Lumber that sponsored it. So Deering Lumber was probably the biggest, you know, big company or supply company like that. Is there any like fishing type things? Like lobsters or something like No, you had to go to Camp Ellis or Pine Point for that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, individuals might have surf fished off the beach when there were no people around. Uh, I never did. I fought, I fished for crabs and flounder off the little bridge between Ocean Park and Saco. <laughs> um, so, have you ever seen the, like, the dummy railroad with the steam-powered train? Nope. I'm not that old. Uh, were you on the beach when any of the planes landed? Nope, not that old. Was it like a big thing when you were, when you were born, or was like after the planes landed? Were they talking about it a lot after, or was? Not to me. I wasn't involved in that at all until I was volunteering at the museum and learned all of that and saw the videos. That were, they're not videos. They're film that were taken at the time. Uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Famous pilot landed on the beach. Lindbergh. Lindbergh, right. But not when I was here. <laughs> I didn't see it. 
I've heard about it later. Yeah. How did you spend your birthdays in LOB? I have a pictures. Uh, I took pictures like a fiend. I have all my life. Um, playing croquet in my backyard at 24 Central. <laughs> uh, when I was in high school. Yep. Nothing wild and woolly. Croquet in the backyard. <laughs> so, did you ever go to any of the dances at like any fancy, like big ballrooms, like pal the Palace Ballroom or something? Yes, in the 60s and 70s. When I was in high school, we went to Sock Hops on the top floor of the town hall, where the meeting room is down. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> Were there like, you know how the Velvet Hotel was like for fancy or rich people? Were there any other hotels or attractions for that, that kind of had like- Oh yeah, a lot of big hotels, but like I said, the fires. Most of them disappeared in the fires. A lot of those. Not when I was, well, there was one when I was here in the 60s that took out a big part of, took out the Jack and Joe slide and the tunnel ride and everything. Um, but before that, the other fires were all before my time. <coughs> uh, so the, the final question that we have now is, um, what were the restaurants like downtown? I was looking in the paper the other day and there was an ad for, see now I'm not gonna remember the name of it. It's on West Grand Avenue near Atlantic where Atlantic crosses West Grand. Venetia's. Venetia has been there, that restaurant has been there since I was a child. And it's still open now. She had to add the paper the other day. I can't believe it because they come and go so fast in town, you know. Um, and the place where we'd like to go and entertain ourselves was the um, mm -hmm. sorry all I can think about is the one we used to go to in Florida <laughs> it's closer to my memory um, top of the hill sandbar the sandbar bar being the operative word um, you're too young to go there. <laughs> but we all went there, congregated there. I can remember being in there one day with my teacher friends, and this man who'd been sitting there swaggered up to me and said, what are you doing in here? He was the parent of one of my kindergarten kids. I taught in this town, too. <laughs> I said, the same thing you're doing here, I think. <laughs> Uh, they kept pretty tight control on teachers in that time and what they could do and what they couldn't do, what they could wear and what they couldn't wear, that kind of thing. That was in the 60s. Carol, where was the sandbar located? Top of the hill. Top of Old Orchard? Yeah, where, uh, what's there now? Um, well, the candy shop, for one thing. Ah, uh, I, okay. Yep. Gotcha. And, yeah between Beach Bagels and the Town Hall. Okay. <clears throat> Were there many, <clears throat> any major changes just in general, like anything about OLB? Because you said like some had strict controls over teachers or? Oh yes. It's like just major changes. <clears throat> teachers' behavior was monitored carefully. How they dressed, how they acted. They never caught us at the sandbar. <laughs> I was never called on the carpet, um, but it was a different time. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was a different time altogether. Uh, we couldn't wear we couldn't wear slacks like this now. Teaching it had to be skirts and pantyhose and all that lovely stuff, which most of us hated. Uh, We had, we had people in our apartment house, we had people from Canada who came every single year to vacation in our house, one of our apartments, every year. We got to know them personally. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful people. And 
and in terms of like does anything come to mind when like did anything surprise you when you were young as in terms of like maybe prices inflated or something kind of big like that I wish I wish we had those prices now <laughs> so so often me and my friends say we want to go back to the 50s it was a better time it was a quiet time it was a peaceful time probably because the news wasn't as extensive as it is now I mean they're in your face all the time you can't get away with anything anybody can um, unless you're president then you can get away from all kinds of things uh, uh, but the 50s, the 50s were an idyllic time for us growing up in Old Orchard. Perfect. Like I said, 5,000 people. 20,000 in the summertime, but 5,000 year round. Yeah, and as in terms of, what was I going to say? Oh, you're losing your memory too. Good. Yeah. That makes me feel better. <laughs> What did you like teach some of the kids in school or what was the main ideas that most teachers taught? Well, I taught kindergarten down on School Street. Those buildings are now condos and later at Jameson School. Uh, and then I was school librarian for a while at Jameson School until I went to Wells. Well, I went back to college for my um, master's degree and then I went to Wells and taught. K to eight library. Um, what did we teach the kids? Well, like I say, I took them down the beach to see the dead whales. <laughs> we we had lots of leeway that way. You could take you could take the kids. You know, hold hold your buddy's hand across the street down over the hill. Uh, but in kindergarten, it's reading, writing, and arithmetic. You know, a lot of kids didn't come to school. A lot of kids, uh, we had some um, disadvantaged families in this town. Um, so a lot of kids didn't have Head Start to go to. And they came to school with very little learning that they got at home. So it was a pretty extensive job to get those kids ready for first grade, second grade, and so forth. And the classes were large. One year I had 35 kindergartners in the morning and 36 in the afternoon. Half day. Yep. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were around when like the plate prices inflated and all that. But like what was everybody thinking when that happened or what was like the main? I think that all happened when I was in Florida and after I came back. And I was so busy keeping my life together and my child together and earning a living as a single mother that I didn't even think of those things. You needed groceries, you went out and bought them. You know? I bought a car at the time. So the prices must have been pretty good because teachers were paid all that much back then. So, new cars. Not new cars, new cars. Do you have anything that Um, No, I think that's it. Sounds like it to me. I couldn't answer all your questions, but I, I'm sorry about that. But What year did you move here? Did I move here? Or were you born here? No, I've been here since the age of three. Or four. Um, do they also live in town? Did they what? Did, do they live in town? Well, sure, they live in town. They do not belong here. One of them does. Where do you live? Where did I live? Yeah. Right now? 21 Atlantic Avenue. Okay. Did you grow up there on Atlantic Avenue? I was reared. I didn't grow up. Okay. No, I grew up on Central Park Avenue. What was your childhood like in Old Orchard Beach? A lot better than childhood is now. Yeah. Do you have a favorite memory from your childhood? Well, I have a lot of them. Which one would you like? For example, the beach is twice as wide as it used to be. 
There used to be all kinds of casinos and large hotels there with big ballrooms. And we had the New England Music Festival here in 1949. 3,000 musicians. But we have no convention center now. There used to be the Pier Ballroom. There was one, the Palace Ballroom. The, we had chamber music in the town hall, and they've taken that over for a council meeting now. We had a fine skating rink at the foot of Heath Street. It's now a municipal parking lot. It was a beautiful skating rink that was lighted at night. Not much has changed. Other, do you have other memories from? <laughs> I have some which may not relate. You're telling, for example, I went to high school in here. I graduated in 1949. We were state champions in 1948 in football. And when I was a freshman, some of the seniors put a cow in the principal's office on Halloween. <laughs> And cows can go up the stairs, but they can't come down the stairs, so they had a very difficult time getting the, on the stairs. There used to be a farm where the high school is now, a big farm, a dairy farm. That's where they got the cow. First job in Old Orchard Beach? I started work when I was 14. I was working 56 hours a week as a dishwasher in Virginia's restaurant for 18 bucks a week. Just one second. What I'm going to do Virginia's restaurant is no longer there. It's where the last call bar is down on First Street now, near the old railroad. What other jobs did you have? I was a night clerk in a hotel on the Main Street. It was called the Old Orchard House at that time. And that's now a parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you live in Old Orchard Beach during World War Two? World War Two. Yes, I did. What was that like? We used to see the planes coming over my house, going to to Canada and then across to Europe. Hundreds of them. We'd sit on the front steps in Central Park Avenue and watch the planes go over. We had spotters guides and we'd check out which kind of plane was. I was 10 when Pearl Harbor was born. born. Are there any stories about Old Orchard Beach history that you have experienced? Say again? Um, are there any stories about Old Orchard Beach history that you have experienced? That I haven't what? That you have experienced. Historically, I only go back as far as 1933, 34. There used to be uh, army people with dogs patrolling the beach during World War II. They had telephones all along there. There were barracks all over town. There was one behind the town hall. There was one at the foot of Atlantic Avenue. There were gun emplacements on Atlantic Avenue. Could you tell us more about that? That's quite unusual. It's not unusual. They were feared, afraid of invasion. I don't know who they planned to be invaded from, but we used to see wreckage on the on the uh, on the beach from ships that had been sunk by German submarines. What are some things that have changed throughout your time living here? Say again. What are some things that have changed throughout your time living here? 
I told you, all the old hotels have been replaced with small uh, uh, motels. And so there are no ballrooms and, and no restaurants in these places. And there used to be many fine restaurants in Old Rocky, there aren't any more. There are a couple, but that's it. What? As, I, as I told you earlier, the beach is twice as wide as it used to be. And the dune that we're building there is the second dune in Old Rocky. The first dune they built the railroad and Grand Avenue on. When I was a kid, all of the land, inland from the, the railroad tracks was swamp. And you can still see it over toward Ocean Park, where the uh, mini putt is down on First Street, that was swamp. Where the parking lots were, there was swamp. Where the foot of Walnut Street, there's no public uh, restroom. That was all a marsh. And, and there were cattails growing there. So, and the dune had been built by the action of the sea. And they built on the dune. Now we've got another dune building and they'll probably start moving out on the way. You knew that the, the beaches has a street name. Mm -hmm. it, this side of the pier is West Surf Street. The other side of the pier is East Surf Street. And so the police have police powers on the beach. And we have none of the problems that other beach uh, communities in York County have about people having access to the low water mark. Some of the things that have, some of the things that have changed dramatically, in, particularly in the schools, for example, when the uh, when I was in school, all of the people who had hunting licenses would bring their rifles to school and leave them in the athletic director's office so they could go hunting in the woods back to school after, after school. Because there, there were deer out here. In fact, I was sitting in the study hall. I don't know where it is now. There's a large room upstairs. And the principal's office was next to me. We heard a bang. And the principal, who was a World War I veteran, combat veteran, saw a deer out on the football field, and he took his rifle out, opened the window, and shot the deer. Now, you can imagine what would happen if they, somebody did that in, in today's climate. So much has changed. Have you been a witness in any of the catastrophe? Catastrophal events in Old Orchard Beach, like pier burning down. Have I been what? A witness in any of the, of, uh, any of the like events, like the pier burning down. Oh yeah, I was here when the pier went down in 1978. You have to understand though that after I graduated from college in America, I spent many years at sea. I was, I was 25 years in the Navy. So that I, although I owned a house here, I was living in Hawaii and Virginia and Pennsylvania and, and different places. So I have a gap in the, in the in the local history during the period that I lived in other places, lived in California. In my travels, I visited over 40 countries, all the states but four. All the Canadian provinces. I've slept in all of them. So I do have some gaps in, in old Dodger history. What made you want to stay in Old Orchard Beach as an adult? What made me want to stay here? Yes. I haven't found places better. I've, I've been in Australia, I've been all over Europe. Um, 
Pacific Northwest. I lived up in the Seattle area. I just happen to like this part of the world a lot better than anyone else. And my roots are here. What is one of your favorite things to do at Old Orchard Beach? One of my favorite things? Probably the beach. Have anything more to say on that? What about the beach? What's to say about the beach? I'm a sailor. I like looking at the ocean. So. This is true. This and my home, my home is close enough so I can watch the ocean. Okay. I'm a musician and I play, I play all of them. Uh, all of my family are musicians. And uh, I started my first band uh, when I was in high school and when I was 15. I had a dance orchestra and we played around. And at that time, we still had big bands at the pier and the palace. Three, three name bands a week and a house band. Uh, the other night, there used to be four movie theaters in Old Archer. No movie theaters anymore. What did you play? What instrument? I've been playing trombone for 72 years. Oh. My son is the music director at the high school. And he plays trombone. My late brother, who was also a naval officer, and Later, a state trooper, he plays trombone. But there was, at one time, there were 12 active musicians in my family. It's quite a legacy of music. Were there any big landmarks that people may not know about today? Well, they just tore down a, a, a landmark over at Milligan's Mills. It was one of the only, there are only two brick, there are only two brick houses in Old Archer, to my knowledge. One of them was over there at the mill pond at Milligan's Mills, and it was just torn down. The Milligan family owned it. The other, the other one was at one time the Methodist Church Parsonage at the top of Cedar Avenue. It was the only two brick houses, I think, in Old Dodge. And one of them turned gone. What did the pier look like when you were growing up? What did it look like? It was much longer than it is now. And, uh, I should have brought you some pictures. I could have shown you. Know, I've got some large portraits of it. But it had a ballroom with a balcony all around, inside and outside. And you could, you'd have as many as 3,000 dancers there. And one of the big bands, like Harry James Band, was there. They'd be jitterbugging, and the beer would actually be going up and down. And there was also an outdoor movie theater at the end of it, so if you get tired of watching the big bands and uh, dancing, you can go sit out outdoors and, and watch the movies. And uh, where the end of the pier now was an amusement arcade, and until recently, the pier was in the end of the pier was in Saco. And so we had a Saco police officer at the end of the pier to maintain order and discipline. And it's only been changed for five or six years because when the old archers succeeded from Saco, they drew a line from the Beach uh, Fair Brook to the Scarborough line, and that left the end of the pier in Saco Bay. And so Saco was over. When Representative Hogan was in the legislature, he got it, he got it changed so that we now have a three-mile limit. But it was curious because um, 
the soccer police officer had to be there to check admissions and all that. And, and, and the pier was much different. There were only boots on one side of the pier. And there was a, a pier of French fries there on the pier. You could buy a cup of French fries for 10 cents. No, I think a cup of French fries is probably a dollar and a half or something like that. It was a much nicer pier than it is today. Much nicer. Do you miss being a kid? Say again? Do you miss being a kid? Do you, Say again? Do you miss being a kid? Do I miss being a kid? Well, not really, because I wouldn't have been able to do some of the things. But I'd like to stop growing old. That isn't going to happen either. My, I graduated from high school seven years ago. I saw both of you girls on television. I'm 70. The reunion, class reunion will be this fall. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Is there anything else you want to know? Um, did you ever go to any of the concerts at the ballpark or the pier? Did I ever one? Go to any of the concerts? At the ballpark? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went to those, but the, they weren't nearly as nice as the, as the big bands that showed up at the Palace Ballroom, which is no longer there. Palace Ballroom was where the um, amusements are now, the roller coaster down on, on Grand Avenue. That used to be the big upstairs ballroom, and there was a movie house downstairs. And uh, that was a good place. I did work there after. Some, some nights after I finished washing dishes and, and working at the restaurant, I went over and flipped hot dogs. At the, at the ballroom, worked at the grill there. When I was a teenager. But I enjoyed um, listening to music in the, in the big band, much better than the concerts that were on the ballroom. So I did see some of them. And I went to, used to go to ball games when we had a triple A team there. Do you have a favorite concert that you went to see? Not at, uh, not at the ballpark, the big band. No. They came and went. Did you ever see any of the horse races at the kite track? Say again? Did you ever see any of the horse races at the kite track? No, but you got one more. See any one on the train track? Did you ever see any of the horse races that were at the kite track? I did, yes, on the kite track I did. There used to be a nice grandstand there. And, uh, when they put Scarborough Downs in, they still used the, the horse barns at the kite track for a while. But it was, it was a very nice... Uh, we used to go skating in the winter down on Little River, which is right down the, the river on track. And it's interesting because we used to walk the rails on rainy days. On rainy days, we would go to the movies for 12 cents. At the theaters downtown, it was 12 cents to get in. 10 cents to get in and 2 cents tax. Now it's what? Eight dollars or something like that. Yeah. 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 We used to walk down the rails. <laughs> Nobody ever had a problem. Now the railroad thinks they have to fence all the tracks. The tracks on. And it used to be a double and a triple track. Because there was a track, a, a railroad that ran from Old Dodge and to the pier at Camp Ellis and along, along the beach. And uh, if you look at low tide in Goose Fairbrook 
You can still see the pilings of the bridge that used to go across the brook for those who are not so good to rest there. A little choo choo train that stopped at all the houses and motel, hotels along there. Good luck as we get over to campus. Yeah. Were you on the beach when any of the planes landed? When any of the what? The planes landed? No, that was before my time. Well, <coughs> there was one during World War II that crash landed, uh, or made a forced landing over the ocean park right next to the. It had British markings on it. It was right next to the Gorka over there. It was sitting up on the beach. It was a beach craft to an engine plane. But the ones that uh, used to take off and landing at low tide down on East Grand Avenue, that was before my time. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Um, have you ever met any famous people that have come to Old Orchard? Met anyone? Famous people that have come to Old Orchard? Oh yeah, I, I sat in with the Duke Ellington band one night. Uh, he's a famous composer and musician. And in fact, uh, his, one of his plays is up at the Maine State Music Theater right now, Sophisticated Ladies. But <coughs> it used to be that, that uh, the black musicians could not stay in any of the hotels. So there was only one rooming house over on Portland Avenue where they used to stay. And the Duke, Duke Ellington band was looking for a place to rehearse. And then another fellow and I happened to hear about it and we made arrangements for them to use the church hall at St. John's by the Sea, which is no longer operating as an Episcopal church. It was on St. John Street down there. Bus Street from McDonald's Garage. And they were so uh, thankful that we found them a place to rehearse the night before they uh, were due to play at the pier that they let us sit in and play with us. So the fellow and I did. And uh, so I met a lot, I met a lot of the musicians. I met Jane Cooper. And there's a, there is a famous uh, cafe, or it used to be, on West Grand Avenue. They've changed the name of it now, but it was called Man's Cafe, and all the musicians would stay there uh, after the, they finished at the pier at night. They'd finish at, at midnight, and they'd all go over there and have a bite to eat. And there used to be dawn dances. We couldn't dance on the, on the Sunday or on the holidays, but one minute after midnight, you could do it legally. And so that would be dance on the, uh, from midnight to four in the morning. For night owls. Um, have you ever seen the dummy railroad, which is that railroad that goes back and forth like I can't hear you, John. It's, this, um, it's basically like the sun, it's the quietest train train that was mm -hmm. gas powered. What? It's the it was the it was the quietest train that was gas powered. Did you ever see that train? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's the dummy train. Do you know what the dummy train is? What about the train? Have you ever seen the dummy railroad? Have I ever ridden on the train? Have you ever seen the dump, the dummy railroad? No, the dummy railroad uh, stopped operating in the late twenties, but the tracks were still there. Uh, but again, I didn't show up with, on the plan until thirty-one, so I I didn't see the dummy railroad. I I knew where the tracks were, and I could tell you the route all the way to Camp Ellis. Although some of it's washed away because Camp Ellis gets eroded, you know, and during the winter storms. Some of the, the streets where they used to go. It used to stop at the, at the uh, 
big baby of a hotel that was there until a few years ago that the nuns had after, after the hotel. But never again before my time. I'd have to be a hundred years old to see some of the things you're asking about, and I'm not quite that old. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. Well, thank you. You have some interesting stories to, that you shared. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It will be nice to meet you. Um, so, our first question. What was your, or, uh, what, what year did you move, or were you born in Old Beach? I wasn't born in Little Orchard Beach. I was born in a place called Jonesport, Maine. It's about four hours or so off the coast in down east Maine. Uh, and when I was born, my parents moved to Saka immediately. I never actually lived there. And we lived in Saka, uh, excuse me, we moved to Biddeford and lived in Biddeford for three or four years, then moved to Saka, and then we moved to Little Orchard Beach in 1960. Um. Uh, did you have any siblings? If so, do you live in this town still? I do. I have a sister and I have a brother. My brother Jay lives in Olochi Beach. He was on the town council and was a firefighter in Portland and retired from there uh, five or six years ago. Um, where, it's a little weird, where do you live? Right, I, right now? Yeah. I live on Garden Street in Olochi Beach. All right. Um, Nice to meet you, Colby. Nice to meet you, Colby. Um, so, what year did you move, or were you born in the Beach? I wasn't born in the Orchard. I was born in Jonesport, Maine, which is about five, four hours off the coast. Uh, I was born in 1950, and my parents moved immediately to uh, Biddeford. We lived in Biddeford for a few years, then moved to Saco, and then in 1960, we moved to Orchard Beach. Do you have any siblings? If so, do they still live in town? I do. I have a brother, Jay, who lives in town. He's on the town council, and he retired from the Portland Fire Department uh, a few years ago. I have a sister, Karen, who lives in Westbrook, and she they both obviously grew up here as well. Um, where do you live currently? I live on Garden Street in Orchard Beach. Um, what was your childhood like? What was your childhood like in Old Beach? Um, um, I enjoyed my childhood growing up in the Orchard Beach. I think it was uh, a great place to have grown up. We experienced a lot of things here that kids in other communities don't have the environment we have here with the, the seasonal um, aspect of it, with the tourists and the downtown and all the things that go with that. So as a kid growing up, I enjoyed every bit of that. I spent my life downtown doing a lot of things down there on the beach. And, uh, got into surfing when I was 13 years old, did that a lot, and just really enjoyed being in Orchard Beach in that environment. Uh, so, yeah, it's um, probably just having had the opportunity to grow up here in Old Orchard, in the, uh, like I said, with all of the things that Old Orchard had to offer as a child growing up and growing up in the 1960s as a young boy. Uh, things were so much different then and you know we all look back at the way things were and think how great it was and wish we could go do it again and you know the old story about how you had to come home when the street lights were on and you know you had to go home for supper or you didn't have telephones and cell phones and all those kinds of things to distract you so you found other things to do so you hung out with all the kids in the neighborhood and you rode bikes together and you went to the beach and you did those kinds of things. I guess just going to school here, all the things that, that went with that, but, you know, in high school playing the sports and then grammar school, junior high school playing sports and um, just the friends that you had and all the good times that you had growing up as a kid. Again, I think because Old Orchard Beach is a little bit different than a lot of communities, you get to experience a different kind of childhood maybe than kids that go up inland somewhere that don't have those kind of things. So I guess just having grown up here, the whole whole the whole part of it. Um, were, was your school experience like a good experience with teachers and the school? Yep. Uh, plus, at that age back then, I may not have thought so. Uh, as you know, when, when, you, when you think back on it though, 
And I can tell you that as you get older and you look back, you think to yourself, you know, I really, I wish I could go back and do that again and do some things differently. Yeah. But again, Old Orchard Beach is a small school system. It was then as well. And you had more opportunities. You know, you may not have been the greatest athlete the school had, but you were still good enough to be able to play because you didn't have to figure out larger number of people to compete against, so you got to, to do those kinds of things. But um, I can't, you know, growing up in Orchard Beach and going to school here, I, I wouldn't change anything. Um, so we were just talking, but did you go through the OB school system? Yes. What do I remember? How much I was hoping it was over, we could get it over with and graduate. Uh, that was number one, probably on my priority list back in those days. But again, I think just having the opportunity to be involved in a lot of the activities in school and all your friends and all those things that you experience as you go through life and you're young and you see things so differently. Um, and again, Old Orchard Beach being a little bit unique, I think the whole experience is something that uh, you know. You again, you look back on and you realize how much you really wish you could yeah. do that again. Not so much even to be younger, just that it was such a good time and the responsibilities that you had, you, you, you were so so different from that of an adult, an adult. And you don't realize it at the time, but it's really a, a good time in your life and you should really strive to enjoy every second of it. Yeah. 1969. Was, uh, what did you do so long? Uh, after that, yeah. I went to school for a while at SMTC. Um, I didn't graduate from there. I uh, left that to take a job in town here working for a place called Briggs Garage. It used to be a, uh, a gas station here in town that had uh, oil burner service and all those kinds of things that went with that. And I went back to school for a short time to learn how to repair uh, furnaces and boilers and those types of things. And then I met a guy that I was working with who happened to know the police chief in town and asked me, he asked me one day if I'd be interested in being a reserve police officer. They called specials at the time. And I had never thought about it. It never crossed my mind. And I said, yeah, why not? And that was in 1971. And uh, I got hired as a special uh, in the summer of 1972, uh, in June of 1972. And I've been here ever since. What was your first job in Oregon? My first job was working at a store called Jimmy's Market on Washington Avenue that's no longer there, sorting bottles. Back in those days, they used to have to sort all the bottles out, put them in boxes for each business or each yeah. manufacturer of the, of the drink. And I did that when I was 10 years old. And that was my first job. I lived right next door to the guy that owned it, a guy named Jimmy Lusatsis, <clears throat> and grew up next door to him. So I always had a job working for him during the summer months or even in the winter. So that was my first job. And I got five dollars a week. So um, the next question was how much did you get paid at your job? For that job I got five dollars a week. And that was a lot of money back in 1960. Well during the summer, um, well I worked for Jimmy's Market all through high school after school, putting up stock and doing those kinds of things. And then uh, when I got into high school, in the summer months I worked at Palace Playland, running the rides down there. Jimmy Mutsatis had another store in Ocean Park that I used to work at during the summer months, uh, making sandwiches and putting up stock and working the cash register and all those things. And then uh, I worked, like I said, I worked at the Palace Playland. Uh, I worked at a place called Vance Cafe, which was a restaurant down where the Public comfort stations are in, in downtown. There was a, a restaurant next door to it that burned. But I used to work there washing dishes. I worked in a bakery for a while down there. Um, I worked at the IGA. There was an IGA on Heath Street. It's now gone. Um, somewhere else did I work? I think that was it. Did you live in OB during World War II? No. And Well, I've been involved in a lot of history with Old Orchard Beach because I've been doing this job so long, so whenever there was an event that took place that was, I guess, history-making, uh, I was certainly there. Like the Memorial Day parades? Well, that, those, yeah, uh, a lot of that. Um, events that took place, like when the pier fell down in the storm in 1960, 1970, 
two, I believe it was, or three. Um, a lot of fires that, that took place, you know, and as a police officer, a lot of the things, crimes that took place, uh, homicides that you've had, different events like that, that, you know, from, from my memory anyway, um, most people obviously don't know the details of those, but um, there were a lot of events that I think are part of the history of this town that I've been fortunate in some ways to have witnessed, and then it's kind of unfortunate in others. What are some things in OB that drastically changed throughout your time living here? And have you been affected by it in any way? I, I think I've been affected by it just by the nature of the job that I have in a lot of ways. Um, How did that make you feel? Well, there was a lot, sometimes sadness, depending on what it was. Uh, like you know, when we've had. Uh, like when the historic buildings are burned or some type of crime that impacted the community in a negative way or those types of things. There's a lot of good things and then sadly there are some things that, are, that make you sad. Yeah. And has it affected you in any way? Um, well, I think yeah. I partially just spoke about that, but for yeah. example, when, when there was a storm, I believe it was in 1972, and no, I'm sorry, it was 1978, uh, it was a big winter storm, and that's the year that the pier fell down for the last time. Um, and I was right there on the beach and watched that happen and saw it yeah. crash into the ocean. And there are also a lot of houses in Ocean Park down by the creek. Do you know where that yeah. is? Um, there were some houses that sat there that the, the surf took and they, they floated off. So, you know, that, that affects you in, in a you know, in a bad way. You yeah. feel badly for the people that lost their property. And, just after that, the town planted uh, dune grass, and it took a few years to grow, but that stopped all of that erosion problem, so that hasn't happened again since. And the pier was never rebuilt to the to the length that it yeah. that it was, so uh, that's that stayed pretty stagnant. So, well, yes, okay. I grew up here. Um, I love this community. It's been good to me. It's provided me with a, uh, a living my entire adult life for the most part, and so I'm very grateful for town has given me, the opportunities that I've had. Uh, I've always, well, since 1960, lived here, and it's, again, a great community, and I like living here, and I have no plans to go anywhere else. Um, so, back to the job situation, what do you do for work now? I am the chief of police. Now, what was one of your favorite things to do in OB, or do you still have a favorite thing? Um, well, when I was younger, one of my favorite things to do, as I mentioned earlier, was I, I got into surfing at like 13 years old, and did that right up until probably 20 years ago, um, and that was one of my favorite things. Playing sports was another one, basketball, baseball, those kinds of things. I played basketball right up until about seven years ago on Sunday nights with a bunch of my friends for 30 years, so those types of things, golf, that kind of thing. To hang out, why is it still here? Well, as a, as a, as child, a child downtown, obviously, uh, I had spent every nickel and dime I had, and they were nickel and dime at the time, pinball machines. Uh, I spent every nickel I had there, um, and just being down there in that environment, and yes, some of it's still there. It's a lot different. It's not anything like it was when I was young, but that was probably one of my favorite places to be. Remember Noah's Ark? Oh yeah, I saw that. I watched that all burn. I was there. I was working at Palace Playland, right across the street, running a ride, and I was right there when it all happened. Yeah. Uh, were there any big landmarks that people may not know about today that you know? Sure. Well, as, as Helene just said, the left-hand side, the pier side of uh, the Orchard Street, was uh, another amusement park, and that had uh, a what you call it. It wasn't a haunted house, but it was called Noah's Ark. It was like a ship, and it was way up high, and it was dark, and you'd go through it, and then there was another big thing. It was a slide, uh, and those were sort of landmarks. The pier was certainly a landmark, and always has been. Um, a lot of old hotels, big hotels that were either torn down and converted into condos or burned down, 
uh, on the Lordship Street there were a lot of uh, hotels and big buildings that no longer exist that were again torn down and burned down. There were back in the 70s and 80s there were a lot of fires in downtown that took a lot of the old hotels and things that were there for since the 1800s. Um, so other than that, I can't think of any other landmarks that are that I was aware of anyway. Um, were you there? Were you part of any of the um, fires around like the Wolfie? Yes. Um, back in the mid 70s to about 1980, I was also a columnist on the fire department, so I. Um, I was there for a lot of those fires, plus I, being a police officer, I was there as well. Um, so yeah, I was, I was there for a lot of those. Do you know how some of them started? A lot of them were caused by arson. Um, uh, somebody said it. Oh. Um, some of them were accidental, lightning or some malfunction with the electricity or something like that. But the majority of them were typically arson fires. Well, it was a lot longer than it is right now. At the very end, there was, a, I think they called it a casino. It was a big building um, that had been used for many different things over the years. Uh, when I was young, it was a, an aquarium. There was an arcade in there at one time. Uh, it used to be a, I believe it was a place where bands played. I think years ago, there was one even further out, but that one that was there when I was young wasn't used for bands that I can recall back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, they had another place on East Grand Avenue, or West Grand Avenue called the Palace Ballroom that was another venue for, for bands. And back in those days, some of the 1960s groups like the Beach Boys and people like that came to that particular place. Uh, one more thing. Um, I don't know if you know, so if you go down the strip and then take a left, yeah. do you know where the Barefoot Boys is? Yeah. Like, the Beach Boys played there. That, Did they? that was my grandfather's uh, restaurant, and then uh -huh. we sold it. But what the crazy thing is, one of the Beach Boys played there, and he tripped on a chair and bashed his jaw off the table. Really? When was that? A long time ago. <laughs> I don't think that was a long, long before you. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you miss being a kid? Yes. I get accused of being childish on occasion, but yes, I miss it very much. Like I said, if, if, when you get older and you stop looking back at, at life and, and you think of how it is now compared to what you had when you were young, being young is great compared to getting older. It's, uh, I think anybody would tell you that they would be more than happy to go back and do it all over again. Yeah. Did you ever go to any of the concerts at the ballpark or at the field? Yes. I was a police officer at the time the concerts were at the ballpark, and I, I attended most of those as a police officer, being with the crowds and that type of thing. The pier now, that was before my time. Um, were you here when the famous big bands played? No. Uh, did you ever see any, any of the horse races at the light track? Before me as well. Have you seen the Dummy Railroad? No, when I've seen remnants of it when I was it? when I was younger. No, I didn't remember it. Was, it wasn't there when I was young, but I remember in Ocean Park seeing crowds of it going across the creek. Some of the pilings were still there and uh, those types of things, but the rest of it was uh, gone by then. But I've heard a lot about it, I've seen pictures of it, but I never never had a chance to ride it. Like planes landed? Which year? <laughs> there was. If you're talking about back with Lindbergh and those types of things, uh, no. When the big hangar was on. Uh, oh no, beach. that was that was way before my time. But back in 1980, maybe some no before that, in the 70s, there was what they had they called a fly-in the, on the beach, and they had airplanes similar to. There was a, actually a repli replica of Lindbergh's plane that landed on the beach that day. And we had to guard the planes because they stayed overnight. Mm -hmm. It got foggy and they couldn't leave, so they had to stay overnight. So we guarded them. Um, there were probably. 30 or 40 planes that landed and spent the night there. I was there for that, but I wasn't there for the hangars. I missed that. Uh, how did you spend your birthday? Did you know like any other day. <laughs> there was nothing special. Going down to the beach. Just go to the beach and whatever, yes. Did you ever go to any of the dances in the ballroom? No. 
restaurant? Well, the one I worked in, Vance Cafe, was a full service restaurant where you went in and sat down. And back in those days, a lot more Canadian people came than do now. And I used to have to work until one o'clock in the morning in there because they served full meals right up until 11, 12 o'clock at night, which doesn't happen anywhere anymore. Um, so the, the restaurants were more of a, a sit down full meal as opposed to what it's like now with takeout and that type of thing. Like Joseph's by the Sea, I don't know if you know where that is, that, that type of restaurant was pretty typical, maybe not quite as yeah. up in scale as that one is, but um, it was all full service meals with, you know, all, all day long. that you weren't, wasn't able to do? That I wasn't able to do? Yeah. In Olochi yeah. itself? Um, I don't know. I've been lucky. I've been able to do a lot of things because of the position I have here and be involved in a lot of things with different groups of people and organizations and those types of things. Um, if that's what you mean, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that, but um, I've been given a lot of opportunities in this community. And I guess you could do anything. I could do anything? Yeah. I can't think of anything that I haven't done that I would like to do. Uh, again, I, I've probably done more than most people just because of the job that I have. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit difficult to answer. I can't think of anything that, uh, you know, I, I even was acting town manager for a few times and uh, I'll, I wouldn't want to do that on a full time basis. But uh, other than that, I can't think of anything. Um, is being a place, your dream job? Dream job? Well, no. I, I didn't have a dream job when I was young. I was just doing whatever. And I got lucky and sort of fell into this and then found that in the end, it would be my dream job. I didn't, like I said, I didn't have one originally. For you? Was it what? It was suitable for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I loved it right away. I, I was, <laughs> couldn't get enough of it. And I still feel that way. It's been a great job. And, you have a lot of opportunities to a lot to do a lot of things for a lot of people, and that's the part of it that I really do enjoy, being able to do something for someone that they really appreciate and let you, they tell you that they appreciate it. It makes you feel good, and it makes you realize that you know, you, you can do things that you know make a, a difference for people, and that's probably the most important thing about what I do is being able to, to make that difference, and I think I've been pretty fortunate. What was your favorite childhood experience in? Uh, like, what was the favorite thing that happened to you when you were a kid? Uh, hmm. Well, I think. Just trying to think back. Well, these weren't necessarily related to uh, to Old Orchard. I don't know where they wanted to. Uh, Rhode Island, not too far from us, was uh, Roger Williams Park. Obviously, the, because of his founding of uh, Rhode Island, it's, his name is everywhere. But of the top hospitals and all that. Uh, and often what, what we would do on a Sunday afternoon was drive here and drive there, and often it was over to, uh, to Roger Williams Park. And they had some, something in there, this, this circle, circular, Thing where they had cars with all, you know, all the bumpers, and uh, anytime we were in there, I'd ask Dad, could I go on that? And the cost was something like a nickel or a dime, more like about uh, a dollar or two nowadays, but uh, and like any kid, I like to drive go around, they had such thick uh, guardrails that uh, 
however wild you grow, but you'd eventually get into that and no accident. But that was one of the one of the highlights that, that I do do remember. Oh yeah, during during the war years, uh, uh, I was too young to be in the war, but old enough to remember many things about it. But at, while we were up there, I took a course in uh, at the senior college at, at USM. It had to do with uh, uh, Maine in the wartime. General, I'm trying to I forget his name. And he was also at one time the mayor of Biddeford. And one of the things he brought out was a, a chart, a, a navigator's chart of, uh, of all the, the whole New England coast. This was taken from a U boat. Happens that I took German as a language requirement when I was getting a degree in math. So I could read it uh, and knew what it said. And this was, one chart they had was a Narragansett Bay. Oh. And there was a shipyard, there was a shipyard uh, up, up in Providence, just a few miles north of us. Of course, it, the U-boat wouldn't have make a good target because you could put the shipbuilding out of commission before they even hit the high seas. So, and for all we know, there were U-boats off our coast, and it's quite a thing to remember. They had the, they had wardens in each neighborhood. The one one lived right next to us, and I don't know whether he had secret information or not. But they were quite the sticklers about keeping it black out to to avoid having giving the U-boat commander a knowledge of where where he was. Uh, so, and I'm pretty certain there were plenty of U-boats off the coast of Maine. There's one funny story. I, I didn't get involved with it. Uh, you know, the latitude is around 43 to 45 along the coast of Maine. If you go across to Europe, if you go from here on the same latitude, what what country in Europe do you think is the first one you meet? Um, I'm not quite good at geography. <laughs> uh, it's actually Spain. Oh. So the Germans thought, well, if that's the latitude, it must be must be sort of balmy and mild temperatures. And so they, they what the U-boat did was to put spies into the USA, would find an isolated location and just send them on their way. But he was dressed more for September weather when it was really December weather. So they, huh. They were picked up by the uh, FBI pretty quickly, or the local police. Uh, it was a great mistake to think, well, if it's at that latitude, it's not, because you know, this, they have this Gulf Stream, it comes from the Caribbean waters up the coast, it veers off to, toward Europe, so it makes things, Things a lot warmer than the latitude would suggest. Mm. 
something that the German spy masters forgot about or never knew. As far as the, the war years, too, it was Newport uh, was, was also a, a center of activity because they, they had a lot of the Navy training and along, and I didn't know the detail of what they were up to. In fact, you've heard the term the Quonset Huts. You ever heard of them? I've heard of it. It sort of looked like a half shell kind of mm. thing got its name from a town in Rhode Island where they originated. Huh. Yeah. In fact, I went to Brown University, Peg went to URI, and when I proposed to her, was right by a Quonset hut, which were pretty common <laughs> at the URI campus. So, well, it must have worked. We, and they're married for 66 years. Yeah. Uh, see. Some of the other experiences you were asked about, some of them, my childhood, and a lot of them were connected with the camp where I started as a little kid camper up to being a counselor. And we did a lot of mountain climbing, uh, particularly in the in the Mount Mount Washington is the one that I've taken. We didn't make snowballs in July. I kid you not. No, I I've been up there. It's Truly an incredible experience. Yeah, then I know it's one you will never forget. Uh, so, there's one mountain we went up, Bald Face, where I had a problem. I didn't know it, but I was, I didn't know it to like the mustard paste, but they had the sandwiches all prepared and slapped it on even and I had a bad reaction to it. And then about 50 years later, my son with some friends went up that same mountain. He was taking pictures and there was a waterfall right behind him. He stepped back and fell. The same mountain father had trouble with. He lost consciousness, but they got him down to Maine Medical. Good. So, and when I mentioned that uh, to one of, one of my former cabin mates that we have a semi-annual reunion of Katahdinites it's now under a different name, a music camp on Encore Coda. Oh. So, but there are some of us that get together about twice a year. And when I mentioned that what happened to my son, he said, uh, didn't you have some trouble there? Well, I did, but it wasn't life-threatening. Mm. And to this day, if I get any taste of mustard, it gives a bad reaction. Not that I like it anyway. <laughs> mm. um, but, uh, oh yes, uh, there was one mountain at Stearns Pond. Got the one. One time they said, "Well, each cabin or tent, just go and explore wherever they want." Well, one of them went to a mountain that wasn't named and they they rode over across the lake and set up they were going to have their lunch 
a bunch of bees came around and bought them a stingle. Got some stings to pray for it. Uh, so after that, it was known as Bee Hill. <laughs> wow. And nobody ever got anywhere near that again. caretaker, fellow George Redland, I don't know if you know, that name is quite prominent in that Sweden Bridgeton area. Mm. But, uh, he did all the, the handiwork and was sort of caretaker over the winter and all that. Questions or anything else? Um, Just pop in with them or whatever you want. Yeah. What are some things that drastically changed throughout your time living here? And uh, have you been affected by it in any way? Mm. Well, um, from 1990, well, from when I first came here, just to well, they used up and way up on Fern Park Ave. And there's a lot of building going on, and when, with our little kids, they were little kids then. But we'd go up and pick blueberries quite often. Only that's been cut off because now you've got a lot, a lot of property up. So it was good for the people who but they got the houses, but uh, not a, it was an, another thing that was an improvement. Across the street from us was a, a little, a small house. It was clean and all that, but somehow it fell into the hands of someone who was kind of irresponsible to the point where uh, the authorities declared it unfit for human habitation. Oh, it was no. that bad. And so then it was taken down. Uh, they have a very fine house to cross there now. It's certainly an improvement. But when they take down a house like that, they usually put some furniture or other things out there that somebody can pick up for free. And the guys who tore it down said, it's funny, nobody, nobody wants to take anything. I said, nobody in his right mind would want anything from that place. <laughs> Well, the, one of the biggest changes, I guess, for the pier was it turned into being a, a dance hall and turned in, into basically an eatery. A lot of organizations, in fact, the one that I'm, the Animal Welfare Society, uh, has, a, you know, the annual semi-chowder fest and all that. So, so those those were some of the some of the changes that I can think of. Uh, I can remember when what's now Walgreens and had been Rite Aid for years. I can remember back when there was a gas station in that place. Oh. So, because McDonald's had been there for quite a while, well, uh, that uh, his art, art 
the guy, I know he died recently. Uh, he and his brother lived right across the street from, from the cottage. Uh, his mother, he's still on it, his mother died about the time that we were coming up there to stay for good. Yeah. have a long connection, long memory of them. The McDonald garage plows our driveway. At 88, uh, it's not advisable to go snow shoveling. My brother-in-law was a chest surgeon. And he said, no man in his 60s should be shoveling, shoveling snow. He says, well, can I do it when I turn 70? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, we usually get someone local. One time we had a father and son handyman team which would do it. The father would plow the driveway and the son would get out and, you know, get shovel out a path as needed. Uh, one of the things I, I like about being here with the, the pace doesn't feel so hustle bustle. Mm. Born in Rhode Island, not far from Providence, and then most of my working career uh, was at, uh, was in the Boston area, though I have worked in Ohio and Michigan and around the capital, U.S. capital. Uh, the, the pace just feels a little slower. Maybe it's a lot slower up, up country, but uh, mm -hmm. Fine for me. Uh, um, uh, any other questions, too? Make sure I cover them all. Yeah, of course. Training, they didn't use that term then, you were just a junior counselor. As far as my career, uh, at the, I, I picked a career that I never even heard of before. I'm a life insurance specialty actuary. Huh. Uh, it's what it basically does. It's if you know of anybody who is good in mathematics, it's about the only thing I could do well. But, uh, and is interested in statistics and probabilities and all that. This, my actuary position, in my day, it was mostly to do with life or insurance, not just life, but property, casualty, health insurance, and all that. Uh, and I was in grad school and getting a master's in math, but I knew at that point that I'll get the master's degree, but I just did not have the ability to go on to a PhD, so I looked for a profession that might be applicable. And this is what I came up with and I have no regrets about having picked it. There are many actuary jokes that would go around, but that's expected. Uh, for instance, my wife's favorite is guys in a hot air balloon about a, some distance above the ground, 
and a cloud come in and his GPS falls out. So he doesn't know where he is. Finally, the clouds break and he sees the guy on the ground. Where am I? You're in a hot air balloon a hundred feet off the ground. Thank you. You're an actuary, aren't you? Yes, but how did you know? You give me accurate information, but it doesn't do me any good. <laughs> So, uh, but it basically, it's uh, uh, the responsibility is to make sure that the premium costs are good and competitive, that they're high enough so that the company won't fold. That's as one, as Peg's dad would say, and he was a Unilever, said the worst thing you can do for the working folks is run at a loss, but sooner, but sooner or later you'll all be out of a job. But at the same time, you've got to have it competitive. So it's a fine line. Uh, I, oh, I had other little odd jobs. I, my dad was uh, Director, was a, an official with Drake's Cakes. You familiar with them? Mm. Yeah. And one summer, I made a. It was 1950. We wanted to make a trip out to California, where my oldest sister was living at the time. And when I got back, of course the. Korean War had started, but uh, I didn't get drafted right away. But anyway, I did get to work at, uh, at Drake's Cakes because most of the other jobs had already right, been taken up and it was already into August when we got back. And so I worked at the plant there the motor pool. So, yeah. My mom and dad actually came from Columbus, Ohio, uh, and they moved east because dad had heard from a, got found from a friend that there was a good opportunity involving uh, cakes and uh, all that, and fried cakes and all sorts of devil dogs and you know and all that so he took it so I did get to see some of his home there because one of my stops was at Nationwide which is located in Columbus the town where my mother and dad were born I got to meet some of my distant cousins as well but the pull of New England got me back there, back again. It was lovely out there, but uh, anyway, that's... But some of the, yeah. But, well, I can think of, uh, oh yes, the hurricane. This is 1938. They didn't give names to them at that time. But a little bit of land that Peg and I were on, Patuxent Neck, became an island. The water had risen so much because the connector to the mainland was kind of swampy. So just pulled right in and left us isolated. Wow. Yeah. In fact, there's a the National Geographic a few months late after that did a special on the hurricane. And there was a picture right along what the, the, the Sheldon Street, which was the connector to the village. It showed a lot of boats in the marina were just brought up there and deposited when the water receded. 
So they had a hell of a time getting that out of there. <laughs> now, when one family had a tip of the neck, uh, they, the family, the three generation family, and they had two daughters who were about the same age as my two sisters. <laughs> family stayed with uh, with us overnight and unfortunately the, their grandparents never got out and have been never seen since then we were, were the death toll was rather high there's another family I know about where they were just as the storm was beginning to get going. They didn't have the kind of preparations and uh, meteorology it was in its infancy. So there wasn't much of a warning about this. And there was someone that bricks fell from a building and it hit someone, a girl was probably about your age. Uh, she died on the spot. Oh, God. It was just really bad. And almost everybody knew someone who had died or was missing, missing permanently. But that's one of those things that you never forget. Other. Let's try to think of some other. Other questions that we got more. We had a couple with us. Favorite place to hang out? At what age? Um, any age. Yeah. Well, uh, one of them had a good friend who. moved into the neighborhood and was still in touch with one another. Uh, he was born the day after I was. He didn't know that his family and parents had grown up in Brooklyn. And his dad was a chemist and he was got a job in Providence. So they moved into our neighborhood. He's the one who organizes these annual, semi-annual get-togethers, these card nights. Uh, and we held around quite a bit. And hanging out at his, his house was a good time. I know in these days, I think kids, what is it, hang out at the mall? Mm. Malls were practically non existent then, but uh, they'd hang out around, of all things, a, a drugstore. But in those days, drugstores, double they had sort of a soda fountain as well. Huh. And get or uh, ice cream, you know, the usual array of things. In fact, those who hung out around there were referred to as drugstore cowboys. <laughs> yeah. 
one of the things that I noticed too with my grandson that's quite different that uh, was often, you know, impromptu, play a game, baseball, touch football, and whatnot, on short notice, or just whoever shows up at a park. And, well, I have four grandchildren, two are in their 30s, late 30s, in fact, but my daughter, my son, College in Northern Virginia. Alex is about seven years younger. And you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at. Always on his phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but always. That's a, yeah. Just the uh, Maggie called to tell us that Alex, who's only twelve, had invented a game. I want to see it. We go down there for for Christmas because. Uh, that's where all our grandchildren are. There are mm -hmm. two of our children, uh, both single. My youngest is, son is uh, autistic. And we all go down there. And one of the things, and I don't know what's true in your generation or is typical, he hardly ever gets out uh, to play and because Nobody else is doing that. He, mm. His grandmother said him about, well, blah, blah. no, I don't want to do that, no. I'm, I'm really a little concerned because there's no substitute for talking one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's just over. But it's better because you can get the little nuances of uh, what they're saying. Mm. Uh, you know, and it's his parents try to encourage him to, to do that. And, but I, I guess it's typical, and not in every kid, but uh, mm. some. Yeah. It's pretty bright. He scored as well on a reading test as his grandpa did on a math test. As I said, I was very good in that, but bit of a klutz otherwise. <laughs> hey, I think it's, uh, so, uh, uh, oh yeah, I did, I, I did have other experiences up in the northern, the northern parts of Maine, particularly Bethel. I went to, my grades were kind of mediocre in my sophomore year at Cranston High, and my parents figured, well, maybe you should go somewhere else. I think I would have come out of it, but uh, met some lasting friends there, too. In those days, this was pre-Telstar, so, and the water place, I think Freiburg Academy is similar. It doubles as both resident schools and it's the regular high school for the town people. And that's what it was in our day. And I liked it that way. Because you get to, get to see the local people and you have mates and friends just Nobody cares whether you're a resident or, or, or in the town. But, uh, I still remember in, in the fall, I went up, I was in the cross country team going around freezing because it's October and November and all you're in is just the gym suit or uh, what, a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> but uh, I did that once, somebody joked that uh, maybe I should 
should wear my tie and coat who had a dress code for, for the boys. Not for the girls, but for the boys. And a meant tie and jacket at the meals. Uh, and maybe I should because I was so slow that... Uh, but that's it's all right. I, you do the best you can and you, you know, give it a, the best shot you got. I was, had a, I was fortunate uh, having a good phys ed teacher who didn't just play with all the guys that had the talents for sports. He was interested in everyone, the way any teacher should be, whatever the subject. Oh yeah, the ski meet. Uh, one of the two years I was there, I think it was my senior year, they, they had a meet of Western Maine's uh, schools and to compete with all the things, the downhill, the slalom, and all the different things. And some of us who were not good enough for the ski team would have the points along the way, either to alert if there's an injury to get the, uh, get the get the help up there. And I still hadn't mastered some part of the skiing, so what I had to do, because I was so far up on the hill, is just go for a while and then intentionally fall, so I wouldn't get too, too big, too big a dangerous speed, and so I. But one way or another, I got down. Ironically, it was on Pleasant Mountain, one that in the summer I had often climbed without much of any problem. But in the winter it was different. <laughs> but I got down, and here I am. Still there. <laughs> yeah. Do I miss being a kid? Yeah. Uh, maybe once in a while, but I never really think of it that way, you know. I'm at the age of where I am, and I, uh, I guess I never think of, uh, oh, there are some things that I did. I Just try to make the best of what I, what the situation is and where I am, which in, includes my army experience. If you're wondering why did I join the army, I'll tell you. Uncle Sam made me a job offer I couldn't refuse, so I did. <laughs> I didn't have any great overseas or dramatic experience. Yeah, I went through basic like uh, other recruits. But by that time I had a degree in math and a career as an actuary, so the Army did something surprising. They got something to do with math. I was at Aberdeen Proving Ground later at Ordnance Depot in Baltimore, not, uh, right across the harbor from, from the Baltimore city. In fact, one day I, my, I walked down the middle of the street, on, I forget what street it was in Baltimore. Of course, I was in uniform and it was a special parade our unit got picked to go on it, so that was fine. Uh, uh, we had our, our own
oldest daughter had been born while I was in the service, and she was with us. Ironically, she, after she went to college at uh, Ohio Wesleyan, not too far from where her grandparents were born, uh, she, uh, she had a roommate that uh, came from Maryland, so she was couldn't get the kind of job she wanted. She majored in psychology, which unless you have a, an advanced degree, you don't go too far with that. And uh, her friend said, "Well, why don't you come down with me?" And so she did. The very same state where she had spend her infancy. Uh, but anyway, she got into computer science, as did her one of her brothers, the other one who uh, lives in, in Virginia. That's why we're going to be down there for Christmas. All my grandchildren are there. But anyway, it was sort of funny that she Hit her and say, well, you, you like Maryland so much when I was in the service. <laughs> now, now you're there for good. There's another thing that's changed in Baltimore. We did go to a game at the old Oriole Stadium. Uh, it was 56. The Red Sox were in town. And uh, I was there to root for the home team, my home, New England home team, not, not Baltimore. And when uh, Bill Claus, Claus hit a home run to put the Red Sox in, I yelled like anything, and there was hardly anybody else. Now, if you go to, uh, Camden Yards, and the Red Sox are visiting. They'll have there'll be more Red Sox fans there than than there would be Orioles. <laughs> well, that's because a lot of them have moved to that area, and we have some friends who think that Fenway Park tickets are so much that they'll drive to Baltimore. There's a boarding house, uh, sort of a place they stay and go to the games. They think usually it's a three-game series. And you add in the cost of driving and staying overnight. And I don't think, you know, even though I know the Fenway tickets are rather high, I knew a, it's a nice man, I knew a, a classmate of mine from Brown who lived in Pawtucket. Uh, got up in the northeast corner of Rhode Island. And he said, I, one time at lunch, he was saying, I, I go to the Fenway Park and it cost me only 60 cents. Well, I'll explain. He lived on Route 1A and he said, I hitchhiked my way up there and get bleachers tickets. They were only 60 cents in the 1950s. Remember, things cost a lot less, but you had less money. Yeah. So, it's quite a bit higher. I think it's, I don't know what the price is myself, but it's yeah. uh, a little lot more. Okay, anything else for sure? Fire away. Um. Um, have you seen the, uh, the dummy railroad? The what? The dummy railroad that used to be in service in Old Orchard Beach. Uh, I might have because, you know, as I say, our, when our children were younger, I'm trying to think of, 
you have any more information? Was it right down near, near the amusements? Um, did, where was the W Railroad? I'm not sure. It was... It was, um... I'm pretty sure it was just a way to get kind of back and forth um, in Old Orchard Beach. I think it was called Dummy because it would go forward and then there was no turnaround point, so they just have to drive backwards. Yeah, it was, it was kind of a back and forth. Yeah, that, that I don't remember. I do know that the corner up near the 7-Eleven that was often referred to as the half, half point, I think that from the downtown to there, from there to the soccer center, they can, that, that, but this was, I got only by hearsay from, from Peg and from the, she could probably give you more detail in it since she spent the summers there for a long, long time. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Any other life experiences that you found very memorable? Just anything overall? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think one of, one of them that's been significant, uh, I mentioned that my youngest son has uh, is autistic. He was uh, during born in Ohio. And again, when I was out there at Nationwide the group there, we didn't know it at the time, and uh, but uh, it doesn't show up right away. This this has been. Of course, any, any parent who finds their child has a disability, it's the immediate reaction is one of disappointment. But I firmly believe that the Lord figured we would be able to handle it. My wife is a, a special lad. In fact, her last job was in Lynn, Massachusetts. And Cerebral palsy was the particular specialty that she had that she could have. And it's been a challenge, and we're fortunate that uh, his three siblings have been very supportive of him. Uh, in fact, when Jerry was his son, Finish up this question and then. Okay. Yeah, we just got to the final question. Yeah. So come on back to the library. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're just about to finish. Yeah. yeah. When some one of his friends made some comment about him, he said, "Well, if you want to be my friend, lay off my brother." But he's, in fact, he's works at a a big investment company who specializes in uh, real estate investment, delivering the mail. They love him. He knows what he has to do and he does it. Sort the mail and then get it around. And, and he's really been able, done well coping with life. siblings and look after him for extended years. Oh yeah, he's also, uh, I've never seen anyone so comfortable on a horse, this is key, since the last John Wayne movie I ever saw.
Yeah.